The company is Basler Turbo Convergence, and we convert DC3s or C47s into BT67s, which primarily is to take a DC3 and uh, install many different modifications along with turbine engines, and we produce those for several different customers uh, that are all over the world. It all started out as we were hauling a lot of freight with piston-pounded DC-3s, the piston engine type airplanes. And the companies we were flying for, big major companies, Federal Express, UPS, Fearlater, wanted all their operators to go to turbine power equipment for their reliability, because the big piston round engines are not reliable. And so we went out and looked for an airplane that could do the ranges we needed, all the weights we wanted to haul, and go into the runways we wanted to go into, and we couldn't find an airplane to do that. Just wasn't one. And so we decided to put turbine engines on the DC-3, and it, that's where it evolved. That's it grew from there. And since then, we've, we've evolved it even further with all sorts of different systems, components, and things like that. But it's taken about 20 years to get it to where we're at today. Where people use it for everything from spray aircraft, cloud seating, geophysical survey, gunships, uh, troop transport, you know, uh, rough backcountry cargo hauling, uh, people hauling up in the northern Canadian bush, all those types of work. We take an airplane and bring it in. The first thing we do is we disassemble it and we do a complete documented airframe overhaul. And we return the airframe back to zero accumulated fatigue, which is basically a zero time. And then we go in and we'll modify it with all modern systems, avionics, electrical, brand new turbine engines, brand new Hartzell propellers. And everything we do with this airplane is a brand new, brand new parts. And it takes roughly 45,000 man hours to build one airplane. We try to do all our processes in-house because we want to control the quality and we want to control the lead time. So we do all our own composite work. We lay up all our composite, the cowlings, for example, the wing tips. It's all a pre-preg fiberglass, Nomex. Uh, we do all our own welding, all our fuel tanks and all our welding assemblies. We do all our own machining. Uh, we try to do everything. We have all our own fabrication. We build all our own parts. And uh, we support about 100 DC-3s. Well, before the conversion, the uh, we call the piston DC-3, the standard DC-3, would take about 6,500 to 7,000 pounds of payload. It would cruise about 145 knots. The Turbine 3 can take 11,000 pounds of payload and will chew out about 220 knots and have much lower approach speeds, much uh, shorter runway capabilities. And that's all, brother. Uh, we did buy that airplane, sight on scene. We didn't know it was that's all, brother. I don't think anybody knew it was that airplane. And uh, we bought it and flew it in here and parked it. And it was several years ago, I want to say probably 10, 12 years ago. And there was just something about that airplane I thought was kind of special. I didn't know what it was. So I just kind of kept it in the back burner and brought the other ones in in front of it. To, to modify and determine DC-3s. And then one day I got a call from the Air Force and the U.S. Air Force, they wanted to know if we had a certain serial number airplane on our ramp. And I said, I think we do, I'll go check. So I went out and looked and I saw the serial number and I saw the registration number. I called him back, he says, do you know that was a lead plane into Normandy? I said, no, I had no clue. And he said, the pilot that flew that into Normandy was the most experienced Air Force pilot they had at the time, he was 31 years old and they used him to do the flight. And about six, eight months went by and we had a gentleman stop in that wanted to do a story on the airport. And I said, well, you may want to do a story on That's All Brother or that DC-3 that we had that was a lead plane into Normandy. So he did a story on it and it came out about a two months later and our phones blew up. I mean, it was, they, we had phone calls probably 20 a day. People calling us about that airplane. I wanted to buy it, I wanted to donate it. And of course, long story short, the CAF found out about it and came to visit us and we sat down and made a deal with them uh, because they were gonna do some really good things with it. They were gonna fly it around to air shows, they were gonna preserve it. And uh, we thought that was a great home for it. So we made a deal with them and uh, as part of the deal, we are doing the restoration on it for them.
And so it'll be all back to original. All the equipment inside will be original. The troop seats, the drift meters, all the bulkheads. And so look, it'll look identical to the day it, it flew into Normandy. We're hoping that we'll finish the airplane sometime uh, before the end of this year. I have it real close to go to the paint shop sometime before the end of this year. That's our goal. We'll see if we make it or not. We're the only people in the world that do this. You know, Bayer Turbo Convergence here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin are the only people in the world that do this. So it's. You know, it's yeah, a lot of bragging rights, you know, and we have a lot of people that are really good people, high quality people that have been here more than 20 years. I would say three quarters of our staff have been here more than 20 years. I think they'll still be around. I think they'll still be working. I think uh, until they come up with an airplane to replace the DC-3, they'll have a life forever. Yeah, they'll be long, around a lot longer than I'll be around. <laughs>